Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. My name is Ruben and today I want to give you an update on Iridium Communications. So what is the company about? Iridium Communications operates a satellite constellation which is used for worldwide voice and data communication. They are the only commercial provider of communication services offering true global coverage, connecting people, organizations and assets to and from anywhere in real time. And this company video will give you a better overview. Iridium is more than just a satellite company. Making connections anywhere, to anything, or anyone. With an upgraded, state-of-the-art constellation, complemented by decades of experience, Iridium brings new energy and a forward-looking vision to the industry. There's no other network like it. Operating in low Earth orbit, Iridium is still the only commercial satellite system where calls and data are passed from satellite to satellite. The network provides low latency weather resilient services to the whole planet. Safety and reliability are in Iridium's DNA. Trusted by people and organizations in some of the world's most challenging environments, Iridium remains committed to helping make the world a safer place. And Iridium continues to innovate beyond satellite phones. The flexible Iridium Certus platform provides voice and data access at the fastest L-band speeds available. Iridium is also enabling the technology of the future, from real-time tracking to command and control for autonomous systems, and simplifying IoT application development beyond cellular networks. And all of this is made possible through Iridium's growing ecosystem of over 450 industry-leading companies around the world. As we look to the future, the possibilities are endless. So now you have an idea on what the company is doing. Let's have a look at the capital market summary. Iridium Communications has a stock price of 38 0.7 dollars at the day of the recording they have a market capitalization of 5.2 billion dollars right now the price to earnings ratio is not visible because the company is still making a loss and regarding the relevant news uh, on february 10th this month they approved a 300 million share buyback for the company yeah, the Iridium network is all about reliability. Iridium completed a multi-year constellation upgrade in early 2019, replacing all its satellites and upgrading uh, the supporting ground infrastructure. Right now they have 66 active satellites. They operate in the low Earth orbit on an L-band system and they have satellite crosslinks uh, that allows for low latency, resilient and high quality connections. Yeah, Iridium is uh, organized into four commercial lines of businesses in addition to supporting our government uh, unique requirements. If you look at the commercial side of things, they focus on maritime, land mobile, aviation and internet of things. So you can look, at, look, look like uh, shipping, remote transportation, uh, general aviation and asset fleet tracking. And for the government side, they are really focused on military, government research and climate monitoring. Here is an overview of the last 20 years of the company. In 2000, the company emerged from bankruptcy in uh, 2000 for about 25 million. Uh, Matt Dash joined uh, as a CEO in 2006. He is still uh, at the company today. In 2009, they did an IPO via a SPAC merger. And after that, uh, the company wanted to replace its satellite network, which was completed in 2019. And SpaceX actually helped Iridium launching these satellites so let's have a look three two one lift off top nine vehicles clear the tower The new satellite network is all about connectivity with 100% truly global coverage. It really doesn't matter where you are, you will have a proper connection on the North Pole as well. Orbital Aerospace is a big idea with three kind of different growth opportunities. For Iridium it's all about global connectivity, roughly 50% of the global population lacks internet connectivity. 
but with more satellites, cloud computing will go global. There is a difference between a LEO and a GEO satellite. LEO stands for Low Earth Orbit and GEO means Geosynchronous Equatorial Orbit, also known as Geostationary Satellites. Again, Iridium is in the LEO space that enables continuous global coverage with low latency. Lower satellites launch costs could enable continuous global coverage with low latency. If you look at the LEO satellite, it's closer to Earth with a distance of 300 miles. If you look at the GEO satellite, it's further away from Earth with a distance of 22,000 miles. Thanks to lower launch costs, the number of satellites scheduled for orbit has increased significantly and it's actually the expectation that the active number of satellites is going to go up in the future. If you look at insider trading, you can observe that the director as well as the CEO have been selling shares when the share price was high as compared of today. So what about Starlink? Are they actually competing with Iridium or not? CEO Matt Dash has the following to say in this interview. Well, first of all, we're in very different businesses. What he wants to do is a commodity broadband system from low earth orbit. Uh, he's using very different spectrum from ours and he has a whole different business plan. Our business is very unique. We do, uh, we're really a personal communications company starting in satellite phones, but now really we're in the Internet of Things or IoT. You know, we supply services to maritime and aviation and the military and industrial users of all type. Very, very different business than what Elon is. He's really going to compete against Verizon and AT&T and Vodafone and Cox. We really don't do that. And so, our businesses are complementary. In fact, we even talk about possibly how we could work together. So very different business, just happen to be in the same orbit, yeah. uh, low Earth orbit. So as I often say, low Earth orbit is a neighborhood in space, not a business model. Uh, we don't compete with each other just because we happen to be in the same space. Well, he did say to the telcos, I guess, that they were listening yesterday, we're not going after you, we want to go after the rural areas, right? So is then the, the fact that you just said that they're going after the Verizon, I mean, is that is that true then? I mean, if from his perspective, he's, he's not, right? Well, I'd say if you're building a system that is generating $30 billion of revenue, you're going to be competing or in the same space as telephone companies and cellular phone companies. Now, maybe he's... Maybe he's complimenting them, or maybe he's taking business away from them. I don't really know. That's not really my space. Um, those are all, that, that's a completely taking a, you know, a, a system that is self-installed by a customer and putting it in to be the internet service is not the business we're in. We're more uh, supporting all kinds of interesting sensor applications and uh, buoys in the ocean and oil and gas pipeline monitoring. We've now gotten into aircraft monitoring with our new Arian joint venture. And so we've really tried to carve out a space in our business that nobody else is competing in so that we have a clear growth path ahead of us. Here's a summary of what he more or less just told you. Uh, the differences, if you look at Iridium, they started as a personal communications company. They started with satellite phones and they now focus on the Internet of Things. They supply services to maritime, aviation and military. If you look at Starlink, it's more or less a commodity broadband system. They will compete with telephone and cellular companies such as Verizon, AT&T, Cox and Vodafone. Iridium focuses more on the L-band connection, whereas Starlink uses a QK band connection. They both operate in the lower Earth orbit and Iridium might be complementary to Starlink. Let's have a look at the income statement. Total revenue for 2020 was 483 million, up 4% year over year. Revenue is split between service revenue, subscriber equipment, and engineering and support services. You can also see that the net loss is narrowing. Net loss is less compared to 2019 with 106 million. Zooming in, we notice that service revenue is split between commercial and government revenue. Commercial revenue is again divided into four parts. We have voice and data for 169 million, IoT data with 97, broadband with 36 million, and hosted and payload and other data with 61 million. Let's move to the cash flow statement. The main takeaway here is that for the operational activities, that they uh, grew their operating activities with approximately 50 million. Now the investing and financing activities. 
during the last conference call the CFO talked about CAPEX in 2020 Iridium had capital expenditures of approximately 39 million moving forward they continue to anticipate total CAPEX of 45 million in 2021 2022 and 2023 as Iridium accelerates investments in real estate and new product development now the balance sheet uh, the company has approximately 1.6 billion dollars in debt the focus for the company has been and will be on deleveraging the balance sheet according to the cfo as a result of that moody's upgraded the corporate credit facility ratings by one notch to a3 this year last but not least the opportunity and the risks iridium seems to be a well-established satellite company space is gaining more traction and while listening to the ceo uh, i really have an idea that he knows what he's talking about they are a niche player uh, with l -band. and the most exciting thing is that he said uh, the possible collaborations with other leo entrants such as uh, starlink however i think the company needs a new catalyst because also during the last conference call uh, matt wasn't really specific about that regarding the risks uh, the company has high debt although there is a focus on deleveraging and it's not suitable for you to invest if you're looking for really a hyper growth stock so i wouldn't buy it but i would put it on my watch list thank you very much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it and see you on the next company